50 Words for Snow. This is the new album by Kate Bush, released in 2011. The first since the magnificent uh, Ariel six years before. And remember, Ariel followed a 12-year hiatus for Kate. So Kate Bush's albums are greeted with some aplomb by a uh, adoring public, me included. Let's have a quick look at the first track then, which is called Snowflake. Uh, the album is six tracks in total, uh, well over an hour's worth of music, and it's a complete contrast to uh, Ariel. It's very much stripped back sound, uh, with a lot of the music uh, being uh, just piano and bass and soft drums with uh, orchestral arrangements. And uh, Snowflake uh, arrives uh, at 9 minutes 47 with a really nice linking piano to uh, Kate's uh, uh, exquisite vocal. Um, there's a hint of uh, flattering bass in there and as you listen to her singing you start to visualize the words the imagery is beautifully conveyed by Kate's vocal, joined by her son on 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 a duet here, and um, the song lulls you into a a sense of tranquility, a slumber of, of tranquility. The images and the metaphors, and with fleeting or orchestral sounds floating in and out. It's a bit like a temptress, uh, the falling hints at the need to be uh, rescued, maybe. Um, winter's bloom, all the songs are uh, uh, revolve around winter. And as for the lyrics, well, it's a mother and son duet. Uh, I guess there's a lot of um, metaphors in relation to childhood dependence, possibly... Uh, nurturing in 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 uh, uh, pre-birth and the free form feeling uh, of early childhood, free of obstacles, judgments, and responsibilities, and the imagery of uh, a perfect mother. That's my thoughts on it. Of course, as I've said before. Your views on uh, the lyric interpretation are very much your own. This is all only what I see. Track two then, Lake Tahoe. And it's, uh, if you're not quite sure where Lake Tahoe is, it's in the Sierra Nevada mountains on the borders of California and Nevada. And in the winter, uh, they're very popular for ski resorts. So that's your link with snow. Uh, it starts off musically, a choir-like intro above Kate's beautiful piano. The restrained strings and violin touch the beauty of the song. It's a moving piece of classical sounds, stripped bare. The percussion whispers at you. To appreciate this, I think you need to e be at ease with yourself. Uh, maybe some meditation to prepare you. It's a full experience, no less. The choir light harmonics, like gentle waves brushing over you in the surf. It's an immers immersive piece of music, that's for sure, that enraptures the listener. And lyrically, a tale of a ghost, I think, uh, who's a woman in white, rising out of the lake. Maybe it's Kate herself, doll-like, and then there's the dog looking frantically for her uh, and running but enjoying the natural beauty and they reunite. It may be a metaphor for finding lost friends or lost uh, company. That's my take on it anyway. Next up's track three, Misty. It comes in at 13 and a half minutes. It's a standout among standout tracks. The image of a snowman and one's love for the visual image. The fun-filled play element of building one and it being completely safe as a male member of the species. 
There's a dreamlike quality as we imagine being wrapped together with a snowman in splendour and watching him slowly melt away. And the piano continues to pull us through the deaf, soft jazz-like arrangements. Lyrically, well, uh, it's, this track has been written about alluding to the author's love for a snowman. The words, the snaping of a snowman to your desires physically and coming to light. It's also a metaphor, perhaps, for a short love affair, passing ships in the night. All in all, a five-star piece of music. Track four, then, it's called Wild Man. The intro, whipping winds replaced by an up-tempo group sound. Uh, it's about the Yeti, I think. Vocal accompaniment by Andy Farrellello Low, and some nice bass parts uh, throughout. There's some soulful tones above a gentle tempo with keyboards to the fore, and Kate's hushed, deep-like narrative vocal. It has eastern-sounding her, her harmonies, and yes, it's a tale of helping a species. Uh, survive in the harsh Himalayas albeit possibly a mystical one but it certainly has reverence to the, the uh, environmental destruction of fellow species on the planet Kate has never been short about making political statements and I think this beautiful track is yet another example to track five then, Snowed In at Wheeler Street. Here Kate sings a duet with Elton John. And I, I tend to focus on the words for the songs. They do tend to dominate. The music is absolutely appropriate and, and genteel. Um, the electronica here resonates, resonates with the sparse piano and Steve Gadd's work on pom-poms is absolutely superb. And the singing is, is a plea to be united and it has an urgency and a desperate disappointment uh, as the, the vocals fade out. But back to the lyrics... Uh, it's about an old flame. It may well be a reincarnated role, um, but it's about the nostalgia of the uh, original uh, love affair, the the ending of that, and then the catching glimpse of uh, a, a, the lost love elsewhere in another city, and a, a, a nod to... Uh, World War Two and being on opposite sides and one hiding the other from the uh, agitators and and then a, an urgency that uh, being reunited in New York City with the snow falling uh, on Wheeler Street and that uh, desire not to be uh, separated again it's uh, the words are absolutely beautiful and Elton plays his part um, you know they they combine like lovers. It's a it's a beautiful uh, uh, track, and uh, it's called uh, "Snowed In at Wheeler Street." So to the title track then, fifty words for snow. Um, Kate invited Stephen Fry to narrate uh, the fifty words, um, and she counted him down. It's a sort of tongue-in-cheek uh, uh, addition to the album. And Stephen Fry's uh, voice is, is very appropriate. I won't go through them. Some of them are, uh, are typical, predictable. Others are nonsensical. Uh, but nevertheless, it, it was a clever idea, particularly with Kate counting him down. Um, it's an up-tempo sort of number. It's got orchestrated loops with nice guitars, bass and drums, but it's light, it's certainly not heavy rock here, and uh, um, the drums are sparsely uh, frenetic in, in places. It's uh, an oddity really, um, a, a bit of a sort of uh, an, an extra addition, not quite up to the standard of the uh, rest of the material here, but 
equally enjoyable. The final track is Among Angels. It's piano and voice and it's a beautifully put together sparse with a few string accompaniments uh, but very sparingly it's a thing of beauty by an awesome talent. Uh, Kate has really uh, uh, brought out uh, some brilliant uh, uh, parts to this album and a unique vocal style uh, continues to be an inspiration. The song, well, lyrically, I, I guess it's possibly about a loved one that's passed on uh, and uh, is always within you, uh, is always there to uh, help you get through life's pains uh, and memories that you hang on to. Um, I, I may be wrong on that, but it's, uh, it's uh, also... Uh, a, a, a means of saying sorry for the uh, occasional lapses um, to the loved one that's passed. So overall, um, we've got uh, six tracks um, that really personify the genius that is Kate Bush. Uh, it's it's in complete contrast to uh, the aerial uh, set, which was equally brilliant. Uh, it really does take a few listens, I have to say. Uh, I love the additions of the uh, 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 duets from Sun, from Annie Fer Ferrell Alo, and from Elton John. I think they really add a lot to this uh, collection. And uh, let's just hope that it doesn't take another six years for this uh genius to put together another collection of songs. The title of the album then